Hey pal, welcome back to Tori's Lifestyle and Vlog and thank you so much for stopping by. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about the acceptable proof of accommodation documents for a UK spouse visa application. Okay, but before I go on, my name is Tari and on this channel, we talk about UK visas and immigration. We talk about life in the UK, how to safely and successfully travel to the UK and how to navigate through life as an immigrant living in the UK. Now, if this sounds like something you're interested in, then please subscribe, turn in your bell icon so you don't miss out on any of my videos going forward. And to my returning subscribers, thank you all so much for always coming back to my channel. I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you so much for stopping by. Okay, so like I said before, we're talking about the acceptable documents to prove your accommodation if you were to apply for a UK spouse visa, okay? And bearing in mind that for everyone in the UK, their circumstances are different, accommodations, there are different types of accommodation. So you could be living in a flat, a shared accommodation, there are different kinds of accommodation that people could be living in, but they might have spouses in other countries that they would like to come to the UK and to live with them, okay? They won't say because they don't have their own home or because of the type of accommodation they live in, they won't be able to apply for their spouse. They still should be able to because they have a right to anyone that is legal in the UK, anyone that has a permanent residence or a legal right to stay in the UK has the right to bring their spouse to stay with them. So if you are legally resident, if you have an indefinite leave to remain, if you are a British citizen, that you can bring your spouse to live with you in the UK, okay? Just to point that out. Okay, but having said that, depending on the proof of accommodation, depending on the kind of accommodation you live in, the requirements might be different, okay? And I've done a video before where I talked about the process my spouse and I went through trying to apply for his spouse visa. I've also done a proof of accommodation in the part where I also got a lot of questions following that video and I thought I would do a follow-up just to clarify a few things. Okay, so if you're applying for a spouse visa, so for instance, your spouse is in a different country. For instance, in my case, my husband was in Nigeria and, and your spouse can be in any country around the world. One of the things that you will need to prove your accommodation is a rental agreement. So if you live in a place, you've legally rented the place, you need to proof, provide the proof of rent, of rented, which should be your rental agreement between you and the landlord. Or if you own a home, it will be your mortgage agreement. Okay, so however, there are some people that do not outright rent homes or own homes. What would they provide? One of the questions I got, which was recently, I think it was last week, said that the spouse is actually living in accommodation that was rented by the organization they work with, which means that the organization rented this place and then gave it to them to live in. And there are a number of people that might be in the same situation. What would they do? Okay, so if they're wanting to bring their spouse, they still can. Okay, but if they're wanting to prove their accommodation then what I said the advice I gave was that they can ask their, their organization which means the company they work for to provide a rental agreement and a letter to attach to it to say actually this person is our employee they work with us they live in this accommodation and we're happy for them to actually bring their spouse to stay with them okay so that's really important but before I continue, I would like to say that I'm not an immigration officer, I'm not an immigration advisor or solicitor. I'm just giving advice based on my experience and the research I've done in the UK. I've lived in the UK for so many years. I've gone through various applications. That's why I'm, I'm giving you advice. And I've also gone through the spouse visa process as well. Okay, that's why I'm able to advise. Okay, so based on my personal experience. Okay, so as long as the organization is able to say, actually, they would have to agree to that in the first place. They're happy for, for this person to bring their spouse to the UK. This is a document that is signed by us and um, this is the rental agreement. Or if they own the home, this is a mortgage agreement, okay? So another question I got is if they stayed in a shared accommodation. So if you live in a shared accommodation, it's the same thing. You should have a tenancy agreement to say, okay, I live in 
a particular room, maybe two rooms or three rooms, I don't know the kind of shared accommodation you might be in. So something to say, actually, I'm renting a room in this apartment, okay, and with that, you should be able to bring your spouse to the UK. If the house is not rent, uh, rented outrightly by yourself, maybe it was subletted to you, the same thing, you know, the, the mortgage or the tenancy agreement needs to be provided, including a letter to say, actually, this person is living in a room in this house, and I'm happy for them to bring their spouse to stay with them. The question I got asked was someone that was living in a studio apartment. So a studio apartment is basically a house that has a flat, has a, a living room, um, a bedroom, and the bathroom and toilet, the basic amenities in the house. So it's not like a two bedroom house, it's a one bedroom house basically. And they wanted to know if they can bring their spouse to the UK with them. And the advice I gave in that video is you can, as long as you have an agreement to say, okay, I've rented this to your apartment. So the size of your accommodation should not really determine whether you're able to bring your spouse in or not. If you've rented a room, if you've rented a studio apartment, if you've rented a flat, if you own a home, it shouldn't affect your right to bring your spouse to the UK. So it's the, in, the, in the law, it's a right to family life. So you have a right to bring your family to the UK, okay? So just to point that out. And another question I got as well was the fact that someone was living with their family. So he was living with his dad. He wanted to know if they, he can bring his spouse or she, I don't know if it's an he or a she, can bring his their spouse to the UK. And it's the same thing if you don't own a home right outright, like I said, the person that you're staying with should be able to provide either their rental or mortgage agreements and a letter to say, this is what's happening. This person lives in my house, has been in my house for such a long time, maybe for five years, 10 years, three years, and I'm happy for them to bring their spouse to stay in, in my house. They'll be living in one room and things like that. So long as they're happy and they've signed it, that should be absolutely fine and i'm saying this because this is exactly what i did so where i was living before my husband came to join me because i came to the uk before him um, i was living in a flat i was renting a, a room in the flat because i was living alone i wanted to cut down costs i didn't want to rent a flat outright so i was living in a house that was owned by uh, someone she's actually a friend of mine now we're very close okay so i was living in a house and i didn't have a rental agreement so when the time came for us to put my husband's application through, I got a, a rental agreement like quickly, but my lawyer advised against it to say, okay, you've been in this house for maybe so many years. Why are you getting a rental agreement now? Because we did the rental agreement and then backdated it. So in our opinion, it will raise eyebrows with the home office and she advised that we, that my, the, my friend, the lady I was staying with, should actually provide her mortgage agreement and also a letter to say she was happy for my husband to come and stay with us and that's exactly what I did and that's why I'm able to give you this advice. Okay, but to be clear, if you want more information, it might be best for you to speak to a solicitor yourself to get the advice to make sure that you get it right the first time. Well, this is exactly what I did and that's why I'm giving you this information, okay? So like I said before, no matter the size of your accommodation, you should be able to apply for your spouse to join you in the UK as long as you have the right documentation and everybody's circumstance is different. The other things that you need to provide when you're filling in your application is your pay slip, your bank statement. So the UK Home Office wants to see that you're actually working in a certain organization and you're being paid certain amount of money annually. I think at the time it was 18,900 or thereabouts. And they want to see that money is coming into your bank account um, on a regular basis. And I think this is my opinion. What they are also looking at is the address that is on your pay slip, the address that's on your bank statements. So you want to make sure that all these documents are tied in to ensure that you have the same address on your bank statement, on your tenancy agreement, on your pay slip. Make sure all the addresses are the same because if they are different, then it might raise eyebrows as well. Okay, so this is just my opinion. Okay, so I thought I would share this with you because I've got a few people asking this question. So no matter where you're living in the UK, as long as you have an accommodation, if you have a rental agreement, mortgage agreement, fair enough. But if you don't have one outright and you're living with someone, then you can ask them for a documentation 
ask them so they'll give you some other of their personal details obviously because when you fill in the application and to ask for the information of the person that you're staying with okay so that's really important but you go through it step by step okay so it's really important okay and no matter the size of your of your accommodation as well you should be able to apply for your spouse to join you in the uk i hope this has addressed some of your questions and i hope this video has been helpful if that's helped you give it a thumbs up share with your friends and family and of course subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so but thank you so much for watching this video and i'll see you in my next video